Uh, yeah, I don't know if you heard it earlier, but YouTuber78 NASA has been waiting for by his computer for three weeks, or her computer, uh, just to see us and hear us, to which I suggested, you know, wow. we, we are on YouTube. We have, yeah, <laughs> there's a beautiful <laughs> irony there, isn't there? All right, shall we get started? I, well, I think some people are going to go crazy if we don't, so we might as well, huh? Well, there's no open, so this is Space Vidcast 4.01. For Friday, January 28th, 2010, my name is Benjamin Higginbotham. With me, as always, is the beautiful, lovely, wonderful, and talented Carrie Ann Higginbotham. Oh my gosh, we're back! How awesome is that? We have got an action-packed episode for you today. We, look at all these news. Look at all these news items. Look at all that. I, look at all yeah, that. Well, you can't see any of it. Blank page. Actually, That's speaking of, super. Uh, you know, actually, we have one neat new feature on the show, which is we've started a wiki page. And uh, cool. if you if you go to my computer calf, uh, you can actually see on the main on the main wiki uh, website itself. You can actually go in and say, okay, I want to see you know episode four zero one, and actually look at all of the upcoming stories we'll potentially be talking about. And I've even got little producer notes down here, kind of giving you a little bit of behind the scenes type stuff, well in advance, kind of some of the neat things that are. You, you may not have known about this particular episode. I don't know anything about this episode. <laughs> exactly. So it's a good thing it's there. Um, think, <laughs> think we should start with some space news? Wow. Here we go. Space news. Ish. You know. Space news. 20 bucks says black. Oh, I lose. Oh. I lose. I would have won. Oh, I, you know, I want to. St- um, I didn't take you up on that. Though. I was going to start with the EDL thing, but yes. actually I think we should start with STS-135. Okay. So NASA has basically planned out the final mission for the space shuttle, which is STS-135. Yes. And as the title of the story goes, I believe it is <laughs> STS-135 has been approved, sort of, not really, kind of. Yes. That, yes. Which is, we, <laughs> that is pretty much it. Well, I mean, that's the title you gave it, though. Mm-hmm. So everyone else is saying, Atlantis officially named Final Space Shuttle Mission, which is kind of cool. The funny part is that if you go on to read the article, it talks about how Atlantis is going to be uh, the final mission, you know, the third and final mission for this year, blah, blah, blah. The final Cylon. The way things are going, I'm guessing we'll see Atlantis in 2012. Yeah, they want to fly in, is it June or July? What's the, I forgot uh, the date. I believe it's June 28th. June 28th, 2011. Uh, about that. So here's a couple <laughs> things. Uh, while uh, NASA is certainly talking up uh, STS-135, they don't have funding for it yet. Right. And that's not something that they can actually control. The Appropriations Committee has not actually said, yes, you are go for funding for STS-135. So NASA can plan all they like and they can put STS-135 on the slate all they like, but until it's actually funded, it's still kind of a uh, sort of mission. Maybe mission. And I'm so glad you didn't say it's up in the air. It's up in the air. <laughs> it's more like it's still on the ground. But I think that'd be a really cool way to take, it. let's just say that they do stay on track. And keep right. in mind, Discovery was supposed to launch last year and still hasn't launched yet. Um, but let's just assume that Discovery launches on time, on time, and uh, then Endeavor <laughs> will probably launch just fine, barring weather, because Endeavor right. isn't a diva like Discovery is. No, and Endeavor's a good and, girl. And uh, Atlantis is a workhorse, so she'll go up just fine. Uh, so uh, assuming all, of, assuming the, the Discovery and Endeavor go up, it is completely possible that Atlantis will go in June, and that will be the end of it the space shuttle program. It is theoretically possible. Yes, absolutely. Yep. <laughs> and so begin. Oh, I was pointing to the chat room. That's not there. Mm-hmm. New features coming up on the show. <laughs> Good thing you're pointing to things that don't exist. Look at look at hey, that. Hey, look at, oh. <laughs> oh, oh. So <laughs> there's STS-135. My hope is that we actually do get one final launch. That would just be awesome, right? Every, every, Space shuttle does need to retire, but you know, one more. Are we going to contact Daft neat. Punk for their song? One last time. <laughs> one more, more time. time. That's the one. Yeah, I think we owe them a nickel now. I'll send them a nickel. Uh, so other things that are coming up, uh, let's talk about Space Up really quick. Yes, let's talk about Space Up really quick. First time ever that there are going to be two Space Ups on the same weekend in two different locations. And what's really cool is that it's Space Up Houston's very first time of mm-hmm. of existing. And uh, Space Up San Diego. It's their first. You know what? Just so you know, this is my first time of existing as well. Wow. I've only existed this one time. You know, so there hasn't been a Space Up Houston before. You. So lucky we're not after dark because I would have had some choice words and or finger movements for you. <laughs> so 
So <laughs> Space of Houston, it's the first year that Space of Houston uh, will be, uh, see I keep getting myself to, into that sentence. It's the first time we have a space of Houston, and it is the second time we have a space of San Diego, but it is the second, the first time we have another space of San Diego. I can't wow. do it now. I so can't do it. Here's, here's, the, here's the neat it's part the about this. the anniversary of the first one. Yeah, anniversary, well, yeah, so first time we have a space up go twice, essentially, yes. in, in the same location. And I'm excited, and we're going to be stream, we're going to attempt to stream all rooms, all pods, yes. from all locations, <laughs> live on the internet, and... Uh, because you really want to go in person, right? You can watch on yeah. the internet, but it's never the same. You can't quite get the audio right just because it's a large group of people. The video, you know, half of them you got the back of the head. It's not the same as being there in person. And if you are there in person, we're going to attempt to link the two conferences together via a Skype video conference and actually allow the T-5 talks in one to be shown on the other so no conference will miss the other conference. Right. That's going to be really cool, assuming we can pull it off. Lots of tech that has to go there. And uh, we, can, we only have one Ben. Well, yes, so I will be going to Houston, <laughs> and I'll be running the tech from Houston. Carrie Ann, bing! I'm going to San Diego. We'll be going to San Diego. And I'm going to be eating marshmallows. I don't know what that means. I'm not doing any tech. Moon pies. Moon pies. I'll and just be sitting on my laurels. Tell us about the T-5 talks. <laughs> so the T-5 talks. Thank you once again, I believe, to Chris Radcliffe for that such was an his. amazing... Yep. Uh, another very cool thing. Uh, the T-5 talks are... They are, they're based off of the Ignite Talks, the Ignite Talk idea. So you get five minutes, mm -hmm. and you get, is it 20 slides, and they change every 15 seconds? Something like that, whatever that math works out to. can't remember if it's 15, 20, or 20, 15. Yep. Um, and, it's, and the slides just go automatically. So whether or not you're done talking about them, they're going to change. Or even if you need them to go sooner, they're not going to change until your time Right, ready. we've had a couple of those. That's, yep. That was highly entertaining. Uh, yeah, but they're, they're a lot of fun. They're very interesting. And anybody, anybody and everybody is encouraged to do either a T-minus five talk or do a, uh, a presentation in one of the space pods. I'm sorry, in one of the pods at the space hubs. Can you tell? I'm a little rusty. It's been a while since I've done this, it apparently. It's been a little while. Anyhow, uh, yeah. So. so we're excited for Space Up. It's February 12th and 13th. Yep. Uh, and again, it's going to be in San Diego, California, and Houston, Texas. Uh, wh whichever one you're closer to, um, if if you have to, if, if you can't decide if you're traveling, no matter what, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, no, certainly no offense to Chris, but the new, go to the new kids on the block. Go to Houston. There's going to be some cool stuff down there. Uh, there's a bigger auditorium there. It's you know, go to the new shiny they, one. Yeah, they. I mean, they have a bigger capacity, um, and because of their particular location, there's going to be some astronauts. Uh, a lot of interesting, fun things going on over there. Of, again, of course, and I know Chris, he won't take offense to this in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but yeah, if, if you have to choose, probably go to the, the brand new shiny. And here's the great thing about Space Hubs, they're unconferences. Yes. So, which means that, as opposed to a regular conference, it, it's certainly a lot of networking, but it's very intimate. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very timely topical discussions about things that you care about. And there's really nothing else like it in the space community. No. And if you could just find a way to make it go, I, I think they're really neat. This, there's, you know, they don't get anything from me saying find a way to make it go. So, uh, I, my favorite space conferences are space ups, and, and that's why we like to go there and stream them. Um, let's talk about if you have a Roku box, uh, you can go to our live channels and you can actually watch them build Curiosity, which is the next so Martian cool. rover. You may not know this, but Curiosity has what I like to call the scariest, most complex EDL ever. <laughs> Have you guys seen this EDL, Entry, Descent, Landing? You get the first battle is you have to get the vehicle out of our gravitational, gravitational Which, I mean, influence. It's not tiny. It's not small. If, no. you've, if you've been watching the building it's of big. this thing, it's quite large. Yep. Quite, quite large. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I don't know what to do there. Um, yeah, so just getting it out of our gravitational pull is... Great. So, you know, we'll, we'll throw it on a rocket and we'll, we'll launch it. We'll hope the rocket goes up just fine. Great. Now, next, next part, we got to get it to Mars. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not something that we do terribly often, but, you know, once you're in space, boom. You know, Mars is over here. You aim this way and hope that Mars eventually goes there. Great. Now, we have to actually land this thing, which is traveling in excess of, to what, 25,000 miles an hour <laughs> yes. on the surface of the planet. We have to enter the atmosphere and not burn up. Right. We have to descend to the surface, and we have to land this craft with no human intervention whatsoever. Check out this video describing exactly what it takes to go through a Mars EDL. It's insane. Hi, my name is Steve Lee. 
I'm here to tell you about our entry, descent, and landing sequence, which is the way we're going to land our rover named Curiosity on the surface of Mars in 2012. During entry, the Mars Science Laboratory uses a series of thrusters to maneuver through the atmosphere towards the landing site. Once it slows down to Mach 2, a parachute is deployed and the vehicle slows down further. The heat shield is released and the radar is then exposed, which begins taking measurements of the height above the ground and the vehicle's speed. The wheels are released in preparation for a final touchdown. The Mars landing engines warm up and the vehicle separates from the back shell, maneuvering away from the parachute to get to a clear, safe spot for landing. Final vertical descent precedes a sky crane maneuver during which the rover is separated from the descent stage and lowered on a bridle seven and a half meters long. The descent stage slowly lowers the rover towards the ground at a speed of about 0.75 meters per second. After touching down on its wheels, the rover is stable. The descent stage senses the offload, cuts the bridle, and flies away to land a safe distance away from the rover. Once on the surface, the Curiosity rover deploys the remote sensing mast. This mast contains a series of cameras used throughout the mission. After ground controllers assess the terrain in the immediate vicinity of the rover, it can be commanded to start roving. The rover is able to take images, process those images, and determine the safest path to drive to get towards the goals set by the ground controllers. Curiosity is able to turn in place and roll over rough terrains and rocks. Curiosity's science mission is designed to last at least one Mars year, which is two years on Earth. The rover is also designed to rove at least 20 kilometers on the surface of Mars. That's crazy talk, dude. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I love that we can do it. Uh, so coming from IT, I think I think I was just like, you can just close your eyes and imagine the points of failure right. in, in that EDL. 300. Oh, man. <laughs> I, we should take bets, actually. We should get a poll going as to whether Curiosity will even make, even survive EDL. I, keep in mind, we've lost about 50% of the crafts that we sent. Someone, someone in the chat room, help me out here. I, again, I got to get used to not doing that. Someone in the chat room here, uh, help me out. It is approximately 50% of the vehicles that we've sent to Mars that we have lost. And usually we lose them in EDL. I believe so. Y yeah, we'll say we being USA and Russia. We being humanity. Humanity has sent, you know, X number of crafts. Approximately half of them don't even make, they just either slam into the surface or, you know, whatever, right? <laughs> Sad trombone sound, the chat room says. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we can expect from Curiosity. As, the, as they were mentioning, it's, it's a giant rover. This thing is massively huge, right? So go, watch it. Watch the live construction from NASA's feed. It's really awesome. Uh, just to get an idea as to how big this thing is and everything it's going to be able to do, it's, it's really, really cool. Assuming it survives EDL. I just ran across that video and I thought, huh. It's very cool. Uh, you know, I think we should take a quick break. All right. And when we come back, some more space news. But, Calf, before you roll that commercial break, you're going to want to half your audio. Bring it right back down to where it was before. See you in a second. Delicious. 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 Delicious.
this guy. <laughs> that wasn't me. That wasn't me. No, I know it wasn't, <laughs> but I can't point to me. Sadly, that guy isn't going to be there. So what up? <laughs> False advertising. He's going to be in Houston. He's going to be in Houston? Yeah. Tim, are you going to be in Houston? Uh-huh. The cool people in the uh, cool people in the chat room are going to be in Houston. Wow. Uh, you know, speaking of cool I knew things, I didn't like you. Sometime in the next like billion years. It, it's, <laughs> yes. This is now we're talking on solar system timelines, which is a yes. little bit different than human timelines. But soon, Earth may get a second sun. <laughs> yes. Did you read that story? Yes. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice is going to blow sometime within the next. Uh, now, now, well, so, so Nebula Some says, think it's, hang on, going to blow in 2012. Nebula says between now and the next 100,000 years. I thought it was between now and like the next million years. I think the word Nebula is missing. Jeff, you need to put a comma in there somewhere, man. Yeah, that doesn't help me. I can't do it. 100,000 years between now and the next 100,000 right. years. All right, so in solar system terms, in ga galactic terms, right. that's like nothing. It's just a poof, like imminent. Right. In human years, eh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe tomorrow. Maybe not, but how neat is that going to be when you look up and Pretty there neat. is a second sun. It will be as bright as our sun in the sky. It will make night turn to day. Is how, and this is going to be like a poof so and it's gone. So who, who live at the poles are already used to this? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Although we will be momentarily kind of like a, kind of, not quite, but kind of like a binary system. Right, not as bright as the current sun. But no, my understanding is it will be as bright. Bright enough, bright enough to read a newspaper by Thank you, Tatooine. Yes. You know, why don't we have a chat room to correct me when I'm wrong? I well, like my overdramatic. You know I want to be overdramatic. It, but it's not there. It doesn't matter what but they you, say. But you were reading what they said. I'm not going to read what they say anymore. I wanted to be overdramatic. Like we don't you know have what? A chat it's room. brighter than our current sun. It's <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to blow tomorrow. Tomorrow. So it's been nice knowing all of at you. At noon, noon tomorrow. Tomorrow. Noon. I'm not going to tell you what time zone, though, nope. so don't miss it. It doesn't matter. Everyone thinks it's their own time zone, so it's all good. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> then, then they'll come back next week. We can be like, I didn't see it blow up, and I'll just go, well, pff, what time zone did you? What time? What did you write time zone? They're like, was oh, it was it bright out oh. where you were? There you go. Yeah. It blew up. So, <laughs> man, that's. But it should last several days. Is the is the last thing I wanted to say. It will last a while. It's going to last longer than just a quick poof. It will. So glad that we're all really excited about it, considering none of us are going to be alive to see it. You know, but it you could happen pass tomorrow. Along this story to your grandchildren and your great grandchildren. It'll be as bright as the moon. Maybe that's what I was trying to remember. As bright as the moon. It was as bright as some large object in the sky that wasn't a star. Wow. Uh, You're as bad as I am I now. I flubbed that story, didn't that's I? That's okay. Epic fail. All right. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. All right. Speaking of cool stuff in the sky, you want to yes. see some pretty shots of rockets? Yeah, we do. All right. Here you go. Pretty shots of rockets meeting. What, dear God, is that? And why is it coming for me? <laughs> this is one of those, yeah, these are one of those things where you get the pictures and they're like, UFOs landed! Seriously, had I not known what this was and I looked up in the night sky and saw that, I think I would cry. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know what I would do with myself. So what you're looking at are different Russian launches or, you know, just what it looks like different. in the night sky from a Russian launch. I it doesn't actually say what the name of the vehicle is. I'm assuming it's a Soyuz vehicle. Um, Come on, tell me that doesn't look alien. That's totally V right there. All a little over bit. that. It looks <laughs> kind of hmm. scary. I it looks scary. I, no, I wasn't going to say It's not after dark yeah. yet. We're just going to call that scary. <laughs> we'll call it scary. <laughs> Apparently we need to be after dark at all times of the day. DJ Flux says it looks sweet. I really, had I not known what was going on, I, I, think, I, I, I think I would run for shelter. It <laughs> very cool though, very very cool. I just thought this was a really neat way to bring in 2011, right? Just really epic, awesome shots. And, you know, and Go we don't have—I I, I didn't have time to grab the video of it. But speaking of uh, epic, awesome stuff, J uh, Jaxa just launched AT HTV2, mm -hmm. and it's really. It's just beautiful to watch their launches because they're, it's like rolling hills mm -hmm. and then you've got the ocean right there and it's just, it's just gorgeous. It's, it, you don't, ex it's this beautiful scenery and then a rocket yeah. and you don't expect it to look like that because you're so used to Florida where it's always, it's just like, bleh. 
flat swampland. And uh, so, what what was on board Ryan Space? Apparently, we're supposed to be asking. What, what were we What were we asking? He says, and guess what was on board? What was on board? Now we have, now to, we have to wait for the wait delay. For the lag. Yeah. Awkward pause. Yuri's night items. Nice. Hmm. Stuff for Yuri's hmm. night. You know, speaking of, might as well do the segue now while we've got Into it. Yuri's night? Yes. Yuri's night, which is coming up on uh, April 12th, mm -hmm. 2011, will be the... Uh, 50. Thank you. The 50th anniversary. You know, it's, a, do math it's a big one. It's you not, think you could. Oh. It's not that. How? Mm. I'm like, wow, 40. Nope, that doesn't seem big enough. Okay, so uh, in 1961, for those of you who have not been paying attention, uh, Yuri Gagarin was the first human in space uh, in 1961. Uh, happened to be a Russian cosmonaut. And uh, so this happens to be the 50th anniversary of Yuri going into space and with the worldwide party, an off-world party called Yuri's Night. The 30th anniversary of the space shuttle. Yes. I had to do that math in my head. I was <laughs> like, wait. Yep, no, that's right. 30th anniversary to the day. Yes. Both, you just buy April 12th, yep. 1981 was the first space shuttle launch. Yep, absolutely. Of which space shuttle? I don't know because they all look alike. Oh, Columbia. They don't, mm, all right, <clears throat> they don't all look alike. If you, do you really think that? <laughs> that? It bothers me a little bit. Do you really actually think that or you just say that to bother me? I just say it to bother me. Oh. No, really, they all, they're just pretty much black and white. Mm. I mean, like the windows are all in the same basic spot. And Go to a Yuri's <laughs> Night party. Go to a Yuri's Night party near you. If there's no Yuri's Night party near you. Make one. Start one. It's free to do. Uh, it's fun, and it's a great way to spread the word and excitement about space all around your community. All space. Your space. <laughs> That's what I was going to say, but I realized that didn't work so well. And we will be broadcasting parties uh, from all over the world. I'm already starting to get some broadcast requests, and i got to yeah. tell you guys, some of this stuff is going to be awesome. Yeah. Uh, and then link the, the worldwide broadcast into your party, and, uh, you know, just... just Find a way to make make one happen. Yuri'sNight.net org. Dot net. Now I don't remember. Someone help me. I forgot. I think it's Yuri'sNight.net. I'm near positive it's dot net. Well, sure. Uh, we'll add it into the wiki. Dot net. Thank yep, you, Ryan Space. Yuri'sNight.net. So there you go. All right. What what did I miss here in the? Uh... Uh, every other thing apparently. <laughs> oh, China there is starting to um, really flourish. Yeah, we're rusty. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Sorry. So uh, China successfully tested their unmanned vehicle that is w what people kind of are comparing it to, the X-37B, the unmanned spacecraft, uh, the U.S. unmanned, U.S. Air Force's unmanned spacecraft. Uh, and they, they're they testing it right now. It's their first orbital uh, unmanned spacecraft capable of staying in outer space for at least 270 days, which is huge, I think. Um, and then uh, dealing with different defense tasks, including the destruction of communication satellites or zombie sets, as we mm. are very familiar with. And it also Brains. looks like a mini Brains. space shuttle. Yeah. It does. It looks like a mini space shuttle. So China's really starting to step up their space program. They, you know, that's they're really, doing it. Ultimately, at the end of the day, that's what this story was about, was China is starting to step up their space program. We know they're working on their space station. They've already done an EVA, uh, so they can walk outside of the spacecraft. And there's the race between India and China for the first country to... Uh, there was one more, wasn't there? Or was it just India and China? Well, Japan's kind of coming right along. No, no, it's just for a race back to the moon. Right? Japan oh, has shown yeah, no yeah. interest to go back to the moon. Yeah. So. Uh, there's a, it's completely possible humans will be going back to the moon within the next decade or so. And that it may not be the U.S. It probably won't be the U.S., as a matter of fact. So we'll, we'll see. I mean, it's still very early to tell. And a lot of people would be like, oh, no, it's not going to happen. But let us not forget. We are <laughs> way too far behind us. <laughs> they were uh, But uh, let's not forget. <laughs> I don't know what voice that was. Let's not forget that the That's U.S. Crazy. went from essentially nothing to on the moon in a decade. Yeah. So it's absolutely possible. So we can do it. So can they. And that was, I mean, and that was using the power of like a calculator, right? So they're like, yeah. oh, we've got a calculator. Let's go to the moon. So, uh, yeah, I mean, imagine what they could do today. There's, it's, it's absolutely possible that they could be going back to the moon and putting humans there. And, you know, frankly, who cares who, who goes there? How exciting is that? This is kind of an exciting time to live. 
as Apache Man says, we're stupid if we don't go back. Yeah, actually, I would say that. We are stupid if we don't go back. We should. We should. Why, why are we stuck in low Earth orbit? We, we should venture out. Go, you know what? It doesn't even have to be the moon. Let's go to Mars. Let's inspire people. Let's go to Mars. Let's build a whole new industry around space. I was watching the... Oh, I'm going off on tangents now. Here you go. Now you got it. Watching the State of the Union address that, yes. that we just had. We... Okay. I, I guess that works. Um, and President Obama is talking about building new industry and building it around green tech right. and you know forming new jobs. But there's no reason that building that new industry, that industry couldn't be space itself. Right. Space... Most of what we have here on Earth, not all, but most of it, is available in space. Those minerals that we're having a hard time finding, space. You want to find, uh, well, space solar power, possible way of getting energy. Uh, helium-3, mm, possible way of getting energy, mm -hmm. still a little bit early. Different resources available on the moon. A lot of stuff we can find and we can build industry around space. Mm -hmm. So green tech is great. But space tech is great too. Why not go towards after both? And what really kind of annoyed me is he kept referring to the Apollo era. He's like, this will be our Apollo. And I'm like, why don't we Sputnik. make... This is a real Sputnik moment. Well, he said Sputnik and Apollo. Oh, I right? suppose, So he yeah. said, that was a Sputnik moment and this will be our Apollo. And, you know, that's great. Except, um, why can't we have a space thing be our Apollo? Why have we given up? Mm -hmm. We have, haven't we? I mean, we... We go around the Earth in low Earth orbit over and over and over and over and over again. It is kind of sad that we refer to something that we've already done. This is going to be like that, but not like that at all because it has nothing to do with space. Like, I love how we keep referring back to the coolest thing that we've ever done is space-related, but going forward, we're not doing anything with space. Yeah, it's like, we lost, it's like we lost interest in it, right? So we, we went to the moon, we did that, we're like, that was awesome, and then we're like, okay, now let's just go around the Earth a bunch of times because Nixon killed the program and no one has had the huevos to come back in and go, you know what, this is important. Look what it did to our country before and it can do it again. Yeah, if the coolest thing we the ever did was a space thing, why don't we just want to continue on that? Obviously, the circumstances are different. We had a Cold uh, yeah, War going yes. on then. It wasn't about going to the moon. It wasn't about science. It was about beating the Soviet Union. Right. That's what it was there for. We did it, and we shut down the program. It served its purpose. We moved on. But look at everything that came out of that. Right. There was all of this stuff that happened that you probably couldn't even see as a side effect of our space program. And we just kind of choose to just ignore it. Maybe it's time to stop ignoring well, Zager, and just, let's go to Mars. Let's just make the decision. Do it. Zager brings up a good point, though, in the chat room. And he says, there are non-governmental huevos taking up the baton. That is absolutely true. Let's, let's take a look at a few of those. We've got SpaceX with Elon Musk. The Dragon capsule is capable of a lunar re-entry into Earth as well as a Martian re-entry mm. into Earth. So it can do the accelerated speeds. Uh, low Earth orbit, you're traveling at approximately 17,500 miles an hour. That's going to be your re-orbit. Uh, for when you go to the moon, you need to go faster. You're going about 25,000 miles an hour. Same thing with Mars. I believe it's the same thing with Mars. Uh, so you need to be able to have a larger heat shield capable of lunar or Martian re-entry into Earth if you want to come back. It, it, no, well, no, seriously. No, no, no. I, Maybe you I, don't want to come back. Maybe I, it's going to be a one-way ticket No, I, I, BZ said, and SpaceX Dragon can carry cheese. And it can carry cheese. But <laughs> it's not just SpaceX. We've got other entrepreneurs out there saying, you know what, let's do some cool stuff. Maybe not um, uh, going to the moon or Mars, but at least kind of doing the Howard Hughes type approach to things. We've got uh, Virgin, uh, Virgin Galactic is um, Sir Richard Branson trying to send humans into space. What better way to get people excited about space than to let them go? Yep. Right? How, I, you, just, you, uh, what'd you do today? I went to space and floated around in zero G. What'd you do? Bet you it tops the conversation at any uh, dinner table. Well, there. I mean, yeah, right? I mean, that, that's kind of the stand-up comedian's joke of like, you know, God forbid you ever get into a one-up conversation with somebody like, you know, Buzz Aldrin. You know, like, well, and then I, really, I walked on the moon. <laughs> I climbed Mount Everest, moon. Just gonna. I walked in the moon. Moon. So yeah, Mars bars on Mars. That's awesome. Ooh, that would be awesome. <laughs> what a great marketing campaign for that. Oh, no. uh, so you've got companies like uh, Armadillo Aerospace, Maston Space Systems, who are both also trying to kind of push the envelope, and dr they're doing it in a different way. They're driving they're the cost. To push the envelope. They, they are. are pushing. They're the driving envelope. the cost of space access down. Yep. They're doing innovative things with these crafts to try to get mere mortals and payloads into space cheaply and easily. And even outside of that, when you get to the moon, you need to be able to land. You need an EDL sequence there. Mm -hmm. Being able to kind of control and work with some of that as well. They've got crafts right. that can, you know, sort of kind of do that. 
A lot of awesome Blue Origin, a uh, Bigelow. Bigelow is another and a big one, right? All of this stuff is coming together right now. So you look at the space shuttle program, you go, oh, that's really sad. I'm gonna I'm gonna miss the space shuttle. Hmm, I want the space shuttle. But really, it's actually kind of an exciting time to be alive. The space shuttle was great 30 years ago, and it it <laughs> That's, Do not uh, fear change, people. That's a strong statement. I'm not going to use the word great. The space shuttle was a giant compromise 30 years ago and has been a giant compromise ever since. Yes. And there are a lot of fantastic people that work on the space shuttle program, but it is a giant compromise. And it's time to move beyond the compromise, the compromise of only going to low Earth orbit and cutting the pr space programs, uh, the money for our lunar space program. That was a compromise. Mm -hmm. It's time to stop the compromise of... Uh, just, you know, saying, well, we have to save all these jobs. And it's time to say, you know what, let's build an entire industry. Let's stop talking about just a space program. Let's build a space industry. Mm -hmm. Let's get some real jobs out of this. Mm -hmm. Let's get some real innovation and in, in items coming from this and get people excited about space that way. Mm -hmm. All right, that's my little rant. Woo! It wasn't really a little one, was it? I hadn't planned on going into that. Are, what, what, are what was that? Any of you? I think I said something. Yelly? Really? Probably. Was it your fault? Yeah, All right. most likely. Do we have anything else we wanted to? Kind of, we hit the, do you want to talk about the sol the solar sail is kind of cool. Solar sail is kind of cool. So NASA had nano sail. Was it D? I, is in dog if I, I remember have to right? Double check. Hold on a sec. Go keep talking. Just yeah. So finish. they had uh, they had their yep. nano sail. Nano sail D. They're having tons of issues with nano sail. I actually thought nano sail D was lost. I didn't think they were going to be able to recover it. Well, and they still don't know what happened. Yeah, I just figured it was <laughs> gone, right? I just I like. Poof, there went the nano sail. Lo and behold, they got it back. Yeah, very cool. Uh, so FASTSAT was launched in November 2010 with NanoSail D and five other uh, experiments on board. And there's a spring that was supposed to have popped, essentially, to push the bread, size, bread box size probe out into orbit uh, and then kind of unfurl the sail. But then suddenly, Nothing. So uh, they weren't really sure what was going on, and you know it kind of sucks because it's it's just one more failure in the long troubled history of solar sails. Uh, so they've been trying to just sort of get in touch with uh, Nano Sail D, trying to figure out what was going on, and then January seventeenth, for reasons quote unquote still unknown to engineers, Nano Sail D uh, spontaneously ejected itself. Ta -da! <laughs> and then they they got reconnected uh, via thank you very much Facebook. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, not that I'm sorry. Keep going. Just keep going. That was wow. a bad, terrible joke. Terrible oh. joke. You okay. can keep going. So um, thanks in no small part to uh, amateur radio enthusiasts uh, Alan Seek and Stan Sims at the Marshall Space Flight Center uh, that were able to hear it go over and uh, they regained communication January 20th. So, yay. I thought, yeah. Solar sail for the win! There you go. All right, I think and amateur radio enthusiasts. Before we, before we close out this live show, um, remind you a couple, couple of things. First, yes. this year we do have a couple of sponsors. First yes. and foremost, Perforce Software, who has sponsored the show uh, last year and going into this year, all of our high definition coverage is sponsored by Perforce Software. And we've got a lot of techie, geeky people who watch the show. And so if you're one of those people and you develop software and you need something to manage your code base, make sure that all the, make that sure that that foundation work is nice and in place. Uh, check out Perforce at perforce.com. And if you're a smaller development shop, maybe you've only got one or two people, mm -hmm. download it for free. Not a trial, not uh, anything. You just download it and use the full version straight up for free for up to two people. Might as well support your own geek. Absolutely, right? Especially if you've got the, you've got that billion dollar idea, right, for that software and you you need you 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 need the foundation server there. So perforce.com, grab that uh, and then as your idea grows and you get more and more people, it absolutely scales up. There is a large um, government agency that happens to build rockets and things like that that also happens to use it that we're not allowed to name but um, they I mean it, it scales up to that level and everything in between there's also a large search engine I believe that uses it um, that you probably have heard of uh, so Perforce Software awesome guys and prodigy? you know Prodigy what no kidding go on Pro they weren't a search engine though no, were they they, they were they were bulletin board yeah. service more than anything else sorry go on <laughs> it was, was excite at home My you dad. got me you got me excite at home <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We can't tell you what it is due to ITAR regulations. That's funny. That, wow. That's funny. 
Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Roll on out. Uh, the second. The second group of people that I want to thank, and actually you guys don't know this, but we have used their software essentially since the beginning of Space Vidcast, and that's a company called Telestream. Mm -hmm. uh, we stream live using Wirecast. Mm -hmm. We do our screencasts using ScreenFlow. We do all of the compression for every episode of Space Vidcast that you've seen using uh, Episode Pro. Mm -hmm. uh, so most every part of this show, in one way or another, is touched by Telestream software, and Telestream is helping sponsor the Space Up um, conference by uh, giving us access to Wirecast so we can stream it in higher quality for you guys than in years past when you we had to use You might be able the... to tell Ben from Carrie Ann. Exactly! So you should have a higher quality stream this year thanks in no small part or entirely due to Telestream. So we wanted to thank them on the show for helping to make that happen. Also remember you can watch this show live every Friday at 2 a.m. Coordinated Universal Time. It's I'm rusty! I'm rusty! That it's been a while. Like, Everybody <laughs> would understand what you were saying. <laughs> That's Thursday nights here in the U.S. That's at, uh, what is it, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. Very good. Standard time. I actually was doing that. If you watched, you could see me doing that yeah, math no, I heard, in my head. I heard the gears were... <laughs> Cobwebs coming off. Oh, God, what's going on there? Um, make sure you check out our wiki. Uh, we've got a lot of really great people who are working on the wiki. We're kind of trying to make it the resource where you go to, not just for the space geeks, right? Because there are tons of, there's, uh, there's a space wiki project out there and they're doing a great job. We don't, yes, we don't necessarily need to overlap. Um, but what it really does do is give you inside access to each one of our shows. Mm -hmm. It kind of brings the common man approach to a lot of this stuff. So you don't have to have five PhDs to understand what the heck is being talked about. Very down-to-earth approaches to what it is, why you care, how to do it, stuff like that. The full acronym list is in there. A bunch of fun stuff. That's at wiki.spacevidcast.com or if you go to, here, here, I'll show you. I can count to potato. Yeah, if you go over to spacevidcast.com, I'll have to stop my own live stream, I think. And stop my live stream. <laughs> Uh, yes, of course you can watch us on Roku. You can watch us on, uh, well, live on Roku. You can see us on demand on YouTube and on Roku. Yep. So if you, if you go over to spacefigcast.com and then you scroll down, uh, you'll see this cool little puzzle looking icon right here. When you click on that, that will open up the wiki, brings you straight in there, and boom, right there you can see, you know, here's the uh, current show that we've got. You can even look at some of the other pages, for example, uh, where have we got, oh, this is a cool page. I like this one, the mobile applications page. So here are a bunch of different applications for like the iPhone and the iPad. Here are a bunch of Android applications. And this is completely maintained by the community. I've done hardly any work here because uh, I'm lazy is really what it comes down to. Uh, and then we've also got a bunch of different uh, space programs. Which, I mean, check out all this great information, completely maintained by the community, all available for free. And certainly, you, you can register for free. You can contribute all you like. You know, make this wiki page a really powerful resource for space and make it uh, a place where people can kind of go and get any information they may need about any project or program or acronym or whatever it may be on, uh, on Space Vidcast. There you go. How neat is that? On that note, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. For those of you watching live or if you've got an Epic subscription, stay tuned. Space Vidcast After Dark is up next. See you next week. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you heard it earlier, but YouTuber78 NASA has been waiting for by his computer for three weeks, or her computer, uh, just to see us and hear us, to which I suggested, you know, wow. we, we are on YouTube. We have, yeah, <laughs> there's a beautiful <laughs> irony there, isn't there? All right, shall we get started? I, well, I think some people are going to go crazy if we don't, so we might as well, huh? Well, there's no open, so this is Space Vidcast 4.01. For Friday, January 28th, 2010, my name is Benjamin Higginbotham. With me, as always, is the beautiful, lovely, wonderful, and talented Carrie Ann Higginbotham. Oh my gosh, we're back! How awesome is that? We have got an action-packed episode for you today. We, look at all these news. Look at all these news items. Look at all that. I, look at all that. Yeah, Are you funded? It's still kind of uh, sort of mission. Maybe mission. And I'm so glad you didn't say it's up in the air. It's up in the air. <laughs> it's more like it's... Still on the ground. But I think that'd be a really cool way to take. Let's just say that they do stay on track. And keep right. in mind, Discovery was supposed to launch 
last year and still hasn't launched yet. Um, but let's just assume that Discovery launches on time, on time, and uh, then <laughs> Endeavor will probably launch just fine, barring weather, because Endeavor right. isn't a diva like Discovery is. No, and Endeavor's a good and, girl. And uh, Atlantis is a workhorse, so she'll go up just fine. Uh, so I assuming all, of, assuming the, that Discovery and Endeavor go up, it is completely possible that Atlantis will go in June, and that will be the end of it the space shuttle program. It is possible. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Twenty bucks says black. Oh, I lose. Oh, I lose. I would have won. Oh, I. You know, I want to. St um, I didn't take you up on that. I was going to start with the EDL thing, but yes. actually, I think we should start with STS one thirty-five. Okay. So, NASA has basically planned out the final mission for the space shuttle, which is STS one thirty-five. Yes. And as the title of the story goes, I believe it is <laughs> STS one thirty-five has been approved. Sort of, not really, kinda. Yes. That, yes, which is, we, <laughs> that is pretty much it. Well, I mean, that's the title you gave it, though. Mm -hmm. so everyone else is saying, Atlantis officially named Final Space Shuttle Mission, which is kind of cool. The funny part is that if you go on to read the article, it talks about how Atlantis is going to be uh, the final mission, you know, the third and final mission for this year, blah, blah, blah. The final Cylon. The way things are going... I'm guessing we'll see Atlantis in 2012. Yeah, they want to fly in, is it June or July? What's the, I forgot I the date. I believe it's June 28th. June 28th, 2011. Uh, I don't know about that. So here are a couple <laughs> things. Uh, while uh, NASA is certainly talking up uh, STS-135, they don't have funding for it yet. Right. And that's not something that they can actually control. The Appropriations Committee has not actually said, yes, you are go for funding for STS-135. So NASA can plan all they like, and they can put STS-135 on the slate all they like, but until it's actually Look fancy any of it. Blank page. Actually, That's speaking of, super. Uh, you know, actually, we have one neat new feature on the show, which is we've started a wiki page, and uh, cool. if you if you go to my computer calf, uh, you can actually see on the main on the main wiki uh, website itself. You can actually go in and say, okay, I want to see, you know, episode 401 and actually look at all of the upcoming stories we'll potentially be talking about. And I've even got little producer notes down here, kind of giving you a little bit of behind the scenes type stuff well in advance, kind of some of the neat things that are, you, you may not have known about this particular episode. I don't know anything about this episode. <laughs> exactly. So it's a good thing it's there. Um, think, <laughs> think we should start with some space news? Here we go. Space news. Ish. You know...